All right, let's head into the last uh, part of this section. So in the basics of Leaflet, uh, we're now moving into the design portion, uh, and that's going to start playing into what we're going to do in the coming section, which is to actually start building out our interface so we can make the interactive maps that we're looking for. Okay, so let's look at our design. So maps are definitely a little difficult to design. There's a lot going on at once. Um, the maps are already quite complicated, given that all the information is dynamically moving around every time the user moves things, every time they scroll in and out, uh, it changes. There's a lot of information to process, and you have to take that into account and be a little respectful of your users when you design maps. So it's very easy for things to get overwhelming, uh, and that goes like 10 times for mobile. Mobile really restricts a lot of what you can do with your map, partly because you don't have access to the same kind of click event, and also touch and touch kind of dragging or touch moving events often don't work quite uh, in parallel with how you figure mouse move events and that kind of thing are gonna work. So you have to make sure you really develop somewhat parallel streams for your users uh, in mobile and your users uh, in desktop. So we're going to do that a little bit. Uh, that's not the focus of this course, but I do want to bring that up because it's just so crucial, um, partly because you know mobile users are probably the majority of your users. Uh, one, uh, a few things we're going to do, we're going to go over using a few overlays. Uh, so that's going to be like custom divs on top of our map, uh, some standards for styling those, uh, sliding panels, uh, pop-ups, a different kind of design we can use for our pop-ups, also the possibility of using modal pop-ups. There's a lot of different ways to have information hidden off screen and bring it on only when the user needs it. Uh, but we also have to be careful of that because too much interactivity can also really lead to users uh, feeling overwhelmed by the things on the map. So in the end we're going for a few key principles and I think clean and simple are really at the top of the list for me. Should be interactivity should be really clear, it should be big and obvious and it should be as obvious as possible how you interact with the map um, and ideally uh, even a user that is very non-internet savvy uh, will be able to understand it. Of course that depends on your audience too and you have to take that into account. So what I've done is just uh, fired up a couple different designs and also just some lists of good maps so that we can take a look uh, and just using the skills we've already gone over imagine how things are happening in these maps. So the first up, I just thought I'd show you know my own map, which is great, and it is in Leaflet. Uh, I recently had it all in Mapbox GL.js, but Mapbox's uh, prices were a little prohibitive for me, so I had to switch back to Leaflet and free base maps. You can see the quality isn't that great on these. This is one of Esri's, you can see Esri's uh, US National Park Service ones, but it's fine for the kind of map I'm displaying. So this is just one of my personal uh, hobby projects. It's nativeland.ca, and you can see that it maps out uh, indigenous territories and that kind of thing. Uh, so that's kind of one of the things I'm interested in doing. So there's a lot of different information that goes on here. As you move around, you can see there's links to different nations and that kind of thing. And I wanted to be able to show users, you know, while they're going around, which colors correspond to which areas. So when we look at this map, there's a few things going on. You can imagine from some of the events we've looked at. So I have an event happening off the, off the map here that adds and removes layers. We, we added and removed layers. Um, when the mouse moves over any kind of layer, I detect that it's moving over a layer and then check that point to see which other polygons might be in the same place. So that way, when I have all these layered on top of each other, you can still see, you can see the treaty there, you can see some language information and some nation information. So I really, you know, I had to make that a custom thing because that's not built right into Leaflet. Now there's still some bugs in here and I also have this geolocation so that if I was to pick Virginia, I'd actually have to turn on a layer though. Um, then you can see it bring me in there. It doesn't zoom me in really far because this map has actually a limit on its base layer. But I've also added some um, English like place names like standard map from Esri that you can zoom in on and also if people want to see that. Now some issues with this interface. Okay, um, 
I think that this is not immediately obvious to people and having it block them from zooming in more is a potential problem. It would also be nice if people could search these lists more easily. I have had type ahead where basically as they type it starts to select for them, but there's some issues with um, accent stuff, although that's easily overcome, but the real issue is actually that certain libraries weren't working uh, with Bootstrap 4 when I built this. Uh, they may already be working now and I should probably look again, but I need to fix that. Um, and there's probably a couple other things like in mobile, this is a little bit trickier, but one of the things I thought I'd show here is that uh, I load it here when it's in desktop, just because I want people to see that there's also Australia. But if I tried to load it in the same place on mobile, I would actually end up with them right in here, and they wouldn't actually see anything. They would be like, well, why am I at this website? So instead, when I find them on a smaller screen, I load them just over North America. That's the focal point of my map right now, so um, that's kind of what I do. It's a little awkward in, in mobile, I find, uh, with the zooming in and out, because the mouse event keeps happening. Uh, another bug that I will get on fixing at some point. So anyway, I just wanted to quickly go over that map because it presents some challenges that I've personally dealt with. I also need to fix this little error happening down here. So there's always bugs. never really ends. So we'll head out of that. Um, I also like how geojson.io has, has done things. Kind of this right-hand panel with a few tabs it really allows you to show a lot of information, uh, even lists of posts and things like that right beside your map. I'd also like if there was a thing here where I could drag the size of them to change, but, you know, okay, whatever. I am a designer. So um, so I think that's a good, just quick idea for a layout. Now let's look at some complex maps here that I found just, uh, just Googling around. So this one, let's reload it. It shows a whole bunch of information about, uh, like, where people bike from. I don't, okay, a bunch of different information. It doesn't really matter what the information is. In this case, we're just looking at interface. So as we move over this map, we can see that as we get close, we can highlight areas, and it seems to show some kind of related areas or where people are biking from to get to that area, which is pretty cool. It kind of shows all over the place. The data is, honestly, it's a little overwhelming. I'm like, what exactly is going on? It, it might be nice if it was a little bit clearer. Uh, on the other hand, I, I didn't really read it that carefully, but your readers or your viewers may also not read things very carefully. But the map is very quick, uh, it responds very fast, and you can see that it's also using kind of mouse over events, and then doing some kind of calculation, looping over the different polygons, maybe accessing a few properties in them, which we're gonna do in the next section, to make sure the right ones are highlighted and shown. So that's a nice little thing, and you can see they're using just a sidebar and this left-hand side. It's not the most beautiful of all the uh, different kinds of maps out there, uh, but it's it's something. It's pretty nice, very interactive. And they've also restricted things like where you can go. Um, they don't want people just going all over the place on this map. I suppose it doesn't really matter, but in this case, they want you stuck here. Okay, so we got a couple of maps here. This I've just come with these up from the awards page. Nothing particularly crazy or special. Now, when I go here, there's all this stuff. We want to go see the map, so let's get to the map on this page. I think we drag it down here. There we go. So it's not the most obvious thing in the world right away. But anyway, we're looking at the map. So this map is on map box tiles. I believe it's still using Leaflet, which is great, uh, although it really doesn't matter because the basics are going to be the same across the board no matter what mapping library you use. So you can see they have some kind of div overlay making this red. Or they have the map styled that way, I don't know. I, I think it's just an overlay. And then they have these um, markers sticking out. And as you mouse over them, there seems to be effects happening. Some of them uh, fade out except the one you're on. The effects are a little bit jumpy. They could probably be a little cleaner. But we know how to make those already. Now when you click them, a little bit of stuff draws up. And we get some text. That's mostly just CSS work and some JavaScript. Uh, it's not really in the scope of this course, but uh, if you know that, you could easily make that happen using some of the events that we've hooked into. And then we just show some stuff here. So that's a nice, simple little map. They've chosen to just make it very muted and simple. Um, and I think that's kind of a nice thing to do. So you can see how it changes over time here.
Okay. And another map, uh, just another one with some custom markers. As you mouse over the markers, these things slide out. This is a very custom base map. Uh, you can see they've just done a very small area here. But this is a geographical map. Um, and we can, again, imagine just how this is working. Uh, when you click a marker, here comes sliding in some information. And this is going to be what we're working on in the next section, really connecting our markers with outside panels and that kind of stuff. So why don't we get on into the next section and move on past just looking at interfaces. I'm sure you've used lots of maps. Um, just before we do, why don't we just take a quick look at the map of all maps, and that is Google Maps, of course. And their interface is really pared down. They just have this little thing in the top corner, some recent areas. Great, that's uh, my address. I'm really glad you could see that. Here's the menu and a bunch of ton complexity in there, and the directions thing brings up this sidebar. So just keep in mind that that has been user tested very extensively compared to a lot of websites you'll see, and it might be good to copy their design if you're lacking for ideas. So let's see you in the next video in the next section where we move on to actually doing these filters and uh, having a bit of fun building a nice looking map.